I actually set out right at the outset to create a building that would be a landmark. And the advantage I had this time compared to any other time is that I was also my own client. The name is called Kusulal. And when you see the building, these images of the building or when you're there in person, the name is self-evident in fact. It's almost as if it named itself. The building was designed for myself and my family. That is my mom, my wife and uh, my brother and his family. Just five members. But more importantly, it's, we are all people with varied interests. So the building is in fact designed such a way that it can be what, what is called an op almost like an open plan. So which means the building can be, uh, can be multi-purpose or multi-use. The site is in fact called Andapura and in, in the local dialect it actually means the place of verandas. The site is on the edges of Bangalore City Corporation, okay, surrounded by orchards, etc. This is north and this is south. And uh, the site is uh, around uh, half an acre, that means around 25,000 square feet of site. In fact, all my other projects also to a larger or smaller extent follow the same philosophy. And that philosophy or ideology is called paleo-modernism. Paleo simply means original or first. The point is to have something that is modern and yet it is superimposed on which is the paleo part, which means a modern building yet embedded in history. In the initial plan was uh, the site would not have a compound wall because from the road I want the eye to travel across the site to the orchards behind. It means if somebody was here, Okay, they will be able to see without any barrier right up to here. But of course, practical and security reasons for it. So eventually we had to build a, a wall right in front. Okay, though there also we tried to keep, as much as possible, try to keep the wall of glass as well as brick both. Viewer will actually come in from here. He passes through this, he'll see this grand staircase. There's a gate here, but he'll come up here and this is the main entrance. The well, main entrance is, is, as I mentioned earlier, bordered by two windmills. They are around 50 feet high. They are actually the same height as your, these two towers, the stellar, the mind and the soul. So they also form a quadrangle, so to speak. And these two towers act as a gateway. So you enter from via this way and you have two routes you can traverse, either clockwise and is clockwise. Two sides of the entrance are two uh, alphabets. In fact, it's a part of an art cell called Britism, where the written word is used to create impression of the mind. They have two words here, how and who. The reason we use these two words is because these are kind of quintessential questions, who and how. So you come in here and then you climb these staircases, the building's four feet high, and then you have columns are made of single layers of glass. That's why, and I have two or three layers of glass. So it gives you the effect of what is called the hypostyle hall. So then you enter through this, uh, the colonnade and this hall in the main building is what I call the hall of the western sun. This entire room is 30 feet by 40 feet, almost equal to sometimes an uh, entire site. At the crooks of the, of the entire site, you have this lion space, it's a white line. It is, uh, in fact, a lot of the building here actually connects to pop culture. The line is actually from, uh, it's called Arsalan and it actually connects to this Narnia books of C.S. Lewis, who's one of my favorite writers. I mean, this is, of course, double helix staircase. To reach the same floor, you have two levels of staircases. Now, why do we do that? Obviously, you need only one, stair one flight to reach up. But here, we did double flights to, to actually go in with the theme of the building, which is paleomodernism, and to fix with what is called the double helix of the human DNA. It doesn't exactly follow the pattern, but the inspiration is still there. So you have this glass staircase with white marble. Behind the line, actually, you have two water bodies. Okay, you have a small fountain inside uh, where there are fish. And here you have again a tribute to classical architecture where you have two layers of columns. In fact, the entire point was to make it theatrical, dramatic, poetic, romantic. That is the entire point of the entire building. Okay, so you haven't have a crystal chandelier, but again a modern chandelier. But right at the top of here is you find a piano, a white piano. There's an adventurous story behind the piano. We wanted a white piano. There was one guy selling a white piano in Trichinopoly, in uh, Tamil Nadu. It's a German piano. He got it from some German missionary who was there. So we had to go there, get the piano, and bring it back to Bangalore. And then, before the building of the glass was installed, we had to install the piano. So it had to be logistically planned. The floors were there, the glass was still not installed. We had to bring in a crane. Okay, the crane actually lifted the piano, brought it up here, brought it all the way here and then 
shit did that and then we bolted the piano down so that tomorrow also the piano by, by mistake also will not roll away so the building has is, is a cluster of around five buildings now why a cluster of five buildings again simple we are in andapura it's almost let's say on the border of a city and a village and in a village layout buildings are clustered all around so which means you had the main house which is the protagonist wing but there are also supporting characters so to speak you have what is called a library which i call this tele of the mind tele is like a term like something similar to a to totem or a tower okay and this entire 50 feet uh, tall building is in other words the library there it is actually symmetrical with another building on the other side which is the tele of the soul which is a prayer tower and like all other buildings in the uh, layout the building is set on a pedestal around 3 feet high it not only gives it a certain kind of weight and gravitas but also prevents any kind of rodents as well as rain water from entering even in the most heaviest of rains as we enter into the building if you come to this particular space okay you actually come in here as, to, as i mentioned earlier is a 50 foot tower but it's almost like a minaret in a masjid or like the taj mahal where you have these bookshelves okay these bookshelves will go right up to another 20 feet and you have the staircase this how people actually climb to build you know the staircase are fixed to it so they actually climb to put the books right on top see the space up there because this is crowned by a stained glass you have a prayer tower or a contemplation room or meditation room which i call stele of the soul we also use something called a pinhole camera principle what is camera what is called a camera obscura at certain times of day when the sun around, around 3:30 in, in the evening after okay there's a small hole in the wall at around 3:30 4 o'clock the evening sun on the western sun will hit that small hole and if you close the door when it, and when the in the entire room is dark within a few minutes you will sit there if the sun is bright enough you can actually see coming on the wall a shimmering cross because that hole actually the light from outside comes in that hole is actually put in reverse of a cross okay so when that comes in so this gets reversed and you actually see a shimmering cross you know sitting on the wall so it is a prayer room but there is no physical cross the building is designed around the five elements earth wind fire water and ether first the earth is of course all the greenery around the earth the wind is of course by two windmills that that generate power as well as turn during windy days the fires between the two windmill towers you have a fireball we light them up at night etc and ether ether actually is space where the so to speak god or the gods reside so that is in the stele of the soul or the or the prayer tower the important thing in the, is not just these elements it is the proportions in fact all the structures that you have built are designed in the golden mean or square ratios which means if this to this will be either golden mean or square ratios the distance between this and the tower will be again golden mean square ratios distance between the opening to the tall will be again a golden mean square ratios first structure i built was the prayer tower or the remember the stele of the soul we built the outside we built it up to 5 feet level and the inner space only 9 feet inside and even though my autocad drawings and walk through showed me that would be great instinct told me it would not but i still went there i thought okay let's let's maybe the technology is better than the human mind i built it up to 10 feet height I realized the space is too constrictive demolished it restarted it and for that you know how much 9 feet became just one more foot 10 foot just for that one foot i didn't want to compromise to get the actual proportion right because remember we have a cluster of five buildings we often made let's say the tower is 50 feet tall we made the tower with bamboo covered it in white cloth and then literally moved it around bit a bit here and there to see how it will look where it look best second thing glass because my i was surrounded by orchards it made all sense at least as much as possible to get the views glass is almost zero minutes okay okay uh, as far as building is concerned thirdly most people are simply not aware that glass is an extremely environmentally friendly material because it's one of the few materials that can be endlessly recycled without loss of quality or 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 even loss of clarity let's start with the color itself it's pure it's serene it gives you a clean look and white always may, makes things look more expansive it looks bigger than it actually is to my best of my knowledge we use st167 saint goban okay for the outer surface i think it was laminated and tempered 
And inner surface again we use ST one sixty seven and fluoride glass if I remember again laminated. And ST one sixty seven is a very high performance glass. Okay, and we use it specifically because of that heat reflectivity which I told us. So we went through all the calculations, went to all the numbers, and easily available, more affordable. The flooring is white composite marble. It's got a gloss and a shine, and it's easier to maintain than, than natural marble. Natural marble stains very fast, especially white ones. In fact, even on, on some of the living room walls, we have used what is called Saint Gobain's Planilac glass. My takeaway from the building is if other architects can have takeaways from building. That means if this can become something that becomes a case study for other people. I'm sure there are things I would have made done wrong. Some things we should not have done. I'm sure they can. And also some things we have done right. Not everything can be copied by architects, but many things can be. And that's hope that and 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 I'll be happiest if somebody copies it.